Give it a try next. What's up and welcome back everybody. On today's episode, my Indian Cobra Tika actually has a stuck eye cap on top of her eye. So during her shedding process, she didn't get all of her skin off. One little eye cap was left on. So we have to go inside this enclosure. We have to clean this enclosure because she just ate a couple days ago and we have to get that eye cap off. So the first thing we're gonna do, we just fill this tub full of some nice H2O. Good, good Dasani water. We're gonna let her soak for a little bit and let that eye cap get a little bit loose. So that way when I pin her and try to pull it off, it comes off a lot easier. All right, Tika, time to come out. We gotta service your cage and service your eye. This is actually the second Cobra I've ever owned. If you guys can see, on her left eye, she has that eye cap. Now the rest of her body has actually shedded very, very good. It's just that eye cap, and that actually just happens a lot with these snakes. Now one unique thing these cobras will do is they'll actually stab you with the tip of their tail. Now the tip of this Indian cobra's tail is super, super sharp, and when I grab it, she'll actually start to stab my thumb and stab my hand. But what we gotta do, Lift her up, get her in this tub. Let her get nice and moistened up. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna help that shed peel right off. And it's gonna be a lot easier on her eye. So we're just gonna slide this closed. We'll give her about 15, 20 minutes to soak up, get some water. And our Eastern Diamondback has been eating a ton of food. He's putting on some size, but he has a big, big poop in the back. So we have to pull him out. We have to clean his enclosure and get it back in. So let's get right into it. All right, this right here is America's largest venomous snake, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. And this snake was actually gifted to me by my good buddy, Tyler Nolan. Thank you, Tyler. I love this snake. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the hook to open this enclosure because this snake is lightning fast. Now her strike range is about three and a half to four feet long. So you wanna be very, very careful when working with this snake. What we're gonna do, we're gonna open this all the way up Give ourselves a lot of room to work with. We're just gonna try to hook her on her first third. That way we can get in there and grab the tail. This snake right here is actually a very, very tough snake to handle. But once you get a good tail on her, it's not that hard. Look at this. It's a beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. Now, one of the goals I wanted to do when I got this snake was to get her on frozen thawed rats. Now, this right here is a wild caught snake caught out of a residential neighborhood. So her life was saved. Instead of being killed, she was caught, captured, and she would spend the rest of her days in captivity. But you can see this snake is super fast, super flighty. So you have to be very, very gentle and very cautious when working with this snake. Look at the venom glands on the back of her head. They are huge. Look at that rattle. That is a full rattle right there. And then she goes, whoo, look at this sweat rolling off my face, Mike. This is intense. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we got a huge, huge poop in here. Now, big snakes mean big poop, which means get out the gloves. We'll see. <laughs> Erica. All right, what we got to do, we got to get this snake mine out of this enclosure. You guys know the drill. When you got something, oh man, gotta wash those plants. When you got a poop that's big, nice and juicy like this, a nice key trick is do the little sprinkle. So that way when you grab it, you don't get a ton of poop on your hands. So this one, we're gonna have to double, double grab this sucker right here, because this is a big one. This is about three large rats. And just like that, throw it in the bin. That's it, Mont, yeah. And that's about it. We're gonna grab a little bit of chlorhexidine one of the safest, healthiest solutions to clean snake enclosures with. Bring this bedding back a little bit. A couple squirts, good to go. That's all she wrote. All right, so we got this Diamondbacks enclosure all nice and spanky clean. So what we gotta do, we gotta get him out of this bin and back in his forever home. 
Look at that snake. Now, right now, he's actually a little bit skinny, but once this guy puts on some weight, he is going to be an absolutely massive rattlesnake. Now, he's pushing close to four and a half, almost five feet long. Uh, he should get there no problem within the next three or four years, as long as he is fed a good, consistent diet. Now, this guy, he's going to be eating large rats and also rabbits. So where these guys come in the wild, their main source of prey is actually cotton rabbits and marsh rabbits. So these guys eat a ton of rabbits throughout the year. All right, look at that rattlesnake. Whew, he is huge. And he is a- Don't worry, it's me filming, guys. Chandler can handle that. Let me get this guy in his enclosure. Now this is a snake I should be using the double hook for. We'll go ahead and we'll give it a try next time. Look at that. Boom! Diamondback rattlesnake, baby! Love it. Awesome. Now before we pull the Indian cobra out, she's still soaking up some water. So what we gotta do, like I said, we fed all the snakes four days ago. We got a little poop inside the spitting cobra enclosure. We got a little poop inside the Arizona blacktail rattlesnake enclosure. And we got a little shed inside the copperhead. So we're gonna make our way around. We're gonna clean these cages and show you guys these snakes. Let's do it. Ooh, he just struck too. Settle down, mister. Ooh. Nice and feisty. But once the snake gets out of the enclosure, her temperament is actually really, really good. Woo! This snake just shedded, and now you can really see those golden browns on her body. Absolutely beautiful snake. Crotalus mellosus, the Arizona black tail rattlesnake. You'll find these guys on the western side of the United States and into Mexico. And you can see she has an absolutely beautiful rattle as well. Full rattle, never been broke off. Beautiful rattlesnake. Oh. One of my favorites. <laughs> Brought in it, it's how we do it. All right, this is actually one of my most favorite enclosures. It's just got some awesome logs, some awesome plants. And this chlorhexene is great for just deodorizing. So even if you have a little bit of poop back in the cage, give it a little spray and you will not smell that stuff at all. This stuff is the best. As I was saying, I love it when a snake gives me a nice big pile of poop instead of the cobras. The cobras will literally swing poop all around the enclosure. They'll get poop on the walls, poop in the water dish, poop on the hive. It's an absolute disaster. And that's why I don't want so many cobras, but I do love them. So I definitely want about 20, 30, 50, no, I'm so I definitely want like 30 cobras. This right here is actually what they call the ornate black tail rattlesnakes because they have a specific golden color to them. Beautiful snake, amazing temperament. One of my best tempered snakes that I own. She's a little fussy when you get her out the cage. She thinks it's feeding time all the time, but you guys can see once I get her out, she's an absolute beauty. Look at those black scales, so cool. The next animal we got up is one of my favorites. It's Oreo, my black and white spitting cobra. The first couple weeks when I got Oreo, he didn't spit that much, but let me tell you what, now Oreo is starting to spit a lot. So it's very, very important to always use eyewear when handling these spitting cobras. Now, even if you don't go blind, it is very, very painful. You guys can see we added some weather strips in between because Oreo is a super, super skinny snake. And he's actually about the size snake to where he can slip right out of that cage. So we put some weather strips on there just to make sure. Whew, he's a feisty guy. One of my favorite things about this cobra is he loves to hiss. I love cobras that hiss. Ooh. Beautiful snake. So cool. Look at that. He's doing pretty good right now. You know, he's not spitting too much. But a lot of you guys know Tyler Nolan just hatched out about what? Eight or nine of these little guys and he's gonna be giving me a little baby. So this right here, is a female. So we're gonna work on getting a little male Naja Siamensis from Tyler. We're gonna raise him up and hopefully in the future, we can breed these guys. Whew. 
gonna be so fun. Look at that. The black and white spinning cobra, Najasiamensis. Beautiful snake. Let's get him in here so we can clean his enclosure. He was hooding up great today. All right. This snake has some awesome displays. Look at that. Woo and this is not a good snake to keep on the hook. If this guy wants to come off the hook, he's sliding right off. Now he's actually a very, very skinny bodied cobra. He's not that thick, but he is fast. So you can see, once I touch him on his tail, he'll spin right back around. So you have to be very, very ready for it. So if you're gonna tail this snake, you wanna make sure you have his first third of his body on the hook before you tail him. That way, he can't come and spin back around on you. Beautiful. Woohoo! Look at that. Woo! One of my favorite snakes in my collection. I'm very, very big on colors when it comes to venomous snakes. So I love albinos, I love white snakes, I love snakes with unusual abstract patterns and colors. That's why I love the snakes so much. Now, for the part y'all been waiting for, the Indian Cobra. Okay. All right guys, this Indian Cobra, ooh, look at the colors. Look at the white in between her scales. So beautiful. She's been soaking for about 15, 20 minutes. So what we're gonna do, I see another little piece of stuck shed on her body. What we're gonna do is pull her out pin her, and then get that eye cap off as soon as we possibly can. You wanna take your time when it comes to pinning a snake. You wanna be very, very careful. And you wanna go right behind those venom glands. Now don't lift off before you know you have a good grip. I'm gonna transfer the grip to my right hand because I'm more comfortable with my right hand. And then I'm going to get this eye cap off. Look at that, it's almost off. Got it, done. Now for the most dangerous part, releasing the snake. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you remove a stuck eye cap off of an Indian Cobra. Just like that. Now she's nice and ready to go, she's healthy. Now big problem with those eye caps is once one gets stuck, every shed after that eye cap start to get stuck again. So it's very important when you see an eye cap stuck to go right for it, get it off the snake, so that way it doesn't cause any more problems in the future. So what we're gonna do, her cage is nice and clean. We're just gonna twist her around. Get her right in that cage. Whoa, that was intense, son. Nice job. So now we have nothing to worry about. We don't have any poop to worry about in any of the cages. We don't have to worry about that eye cap anymore. Everyone's clean, everyone's healthy, and the collection is good to go. See you guys next time on Stone's World. Don't forget, like, comment, and most important part, subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you guys next time.